treat you good Hello, we're Neon Trees, and you're watching 987fm.com. I want to talk a little bit about um, the writing process going into this yes. new effort, and if it was different at all coming off the backs of such a monster record. Can you talk about that? It was. Um, I think the last thing we wanted was a record that sounded like we wrote it in four weeks after a tour, like in between tours. So um, I love to write anyways for the hobby and therapy, so I was just started writing Raptor Habits anyway. And um, it's fun to, actually to, to hear the songs in complete because I have like personal feeling in, in the songs like in different areas of the world now like you know, there's a song called Close to You that I started writing in Spain and then it finished it in Australia and that kind of thing so we, we were writing um, since the beginning of the, the last wanted to record. call you a citizen of the world. Oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> okay. It's true. It's cool though because he would he would demo out a lot of, of songs and give them to us and so it's fun to like see his because he's a great song. So it was fun to like get those songs and be like, wow, these are really good and then to be able to like take you know, our creativity to it and be like, okay, well, what can I do here to accentuate and not step on this beautiful melody that he's just written, this beautiful arrangement. So it, it was it was fun and I'm glad that, that it kind of went like that because we didn't have a lot of time. We stopped touring and we had to go right to like rehearsing and we only really had a, a few weeks to really get comfortable and studio ready with all of these new songs. So I, I think it worked out perfectly but if we had had any less time it would have been done. It would have been so, awesome. <laughs> yeah. We knew we wanted to work with Justin who did our, Justin Mello Johnson who ended up producing the record so it was fun to just send him complete demos and he would already have it. Um, just I know bands get our bias in, a lot, in every band when they put out a record like yeah, the best. but we really are proud of it. it. It's so excited to get it out. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best but it's we're really really excited about it and where we went with it. So. Are you thinking um, during the writing about how this is going to translate to the live? live? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Our live show is our favorite thing about this whole experience and getting to getting to play live and dress up and be fun and see people um, enjoy the music that we're creating. So yeah, um, and we've been playing a couple new songs now for the last few shows we've been doing. We played South by last week, and uh, it is so much fun to have new stuff because we played so long on eight songs basically. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. And. Uh, not that it got old, that it never gets old to play your music. I'm no. be idiots to say that. But it's so much fun to have more. And to like, you do get anxious, yeah. It, uh, I, I see what you're saying too, that it's not, those songs don't get old, but when these new ones have, you know, have surfaced now, that we're so anxious to share those and play those. Yeah. That, uh, we don't love our older cool. children any less than we like our newborns, but the newborns are what you go over. You know? Something, something that's cool about this one is it's, it's really diverse. Like We have a lot of different moods that we explored on this album. And so it'd be cool to mix that with all the old songs. Like the the last album was a lot of, like a lot of people would say they'd work out to it because it was just kind of like go, go, go. And this one has like more moods to it. It gets even more aggressive in some spots and then it pulls it's it really back down. What's yeah. that uh, pure moods? Remember yeah. that Kelsey? This is, yeah. it's it's like, this is the new it's very end, yeah. No, my my well. dad has that CD. Uh, <laughs> my brother. Every massage therapist. Hand flutes right. are all over the place. Right. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> That's an enigma. No, that's an enigma. That's an enigma. Their one song, which we had, my family had the maxi CD single of that, which was literally five different versions of that same song. It didn't even have a B side. How crazy is that? They had a different setting on the Casio keyboard, and then they just played it with a different instrument. Exactly. You guys have you guys have covered a lot of tracks. Not, not, not that that. or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate, not yet. But you could though, right? <laughs> we should do that song. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are. Tonight. So. I love it. I love it. Um, so you guys are originally from Provo, right? Yep. Um, I grew up and with him in Marietta, which is in the Inland Empire down in California. So we're California natives and she's a Chicago native and he's an island in Las Vegas native. But um, 
various things brought us together there. I originally moved to Utah because of Chris going to school there. Okay. And people think it's weird, like, yeah, I followed him because to play music and he was going to, well, he was going to massage school. That's probably the weird. So he does have He was going to massage school. In case that, that, that audio didn't get picked up back there, he was going to massage school. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. Okay. And uh, they... School, regular school, university style school. Yeah. I was just playing in like eight bands. Yeah. And, and so transient. And so we met up and we formed it, and that's where it all began. So, and we all still live there now. So we claim Provo as, a, as our place. Mm -hmm. How much do you think? And I've asked. We had. Um, who did we have in here last? Yesterday, isn't it? Of mountains and men. Yeah. Of, of, of monsters, of monsters and, men. and men. <laughs> <laughs> This guy. Was, was Dave even here? Dave's not here. Dave wasn't here. Dave's not here. Oh, yeah, yeah. here. No, no, I was like, mountains and men. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, of monsters and men. And they're from Iceland. Oh, right. And, right. And um, I asked them the same question because I'm, I'm really intrigued about this. How much do you think environment plays a part in terms of the creation of art? Do you think oh that gosh. being from Provo and having that as your backdrop yes. has made a difference? 100%. Um, maybe not 100 No, I, I was going to say that's a little extreme. Well, growing up in Southern California, yeah. I always had a hard time just finding bandmates. And then there's no local scene there where, we grew up. where we grew up. There was like, you could only play coffee shops and stuff. And it wasn't very... Or smoothie bars. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're playing acoustic. So people yeah. are... <laughs> People are very surprised. Very surprised, yeah, it's horrible. People are very surprised to find out that Provo has, you know, such a, it's a, a deep music scene yeah. and, and how many musicians are there. And part of it though is is the college scene there because you have two huge universities and so during the school year you have sixty thousand students from all over the world and a lot of kids. Let's talk about bands. this. But that's the thing is so you have these university kids. But without like a credible venue and like people to take music seriously, they probably have nowhere to go. Do you think about legacy at all? Does that word come into your daily mindset in terms of how you want to be remembered, either personally or musically? I think about it. I, I would hope we all think about it. I don't know if it's something we all logically talk about all the time. I don't but, think you can concentrate on it. That would be a bad. But I'm not entitled to that yet. No, not at all. And. But we want to have a lengthy career, if that if that can still happen these days, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, we don't. I think there's a lot of things that we know we want to do, and we don't want to give it all away on the, on one record. So we've been able to slowly evolve, and I think that'll make sense after our second record. It's different, but it's not sabotaging anything we've built so far. And um, I hope that people like it. What if it's a total bust and whatever? I heard you say in another interview. Yeah. Right? Then so next year it's Neon Trees doing the Habits Tour. Yeah. Like <laughs> Habits start to finish. Yeah. With the new hit Enigma. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, the Legacy Tour. I hope it'll be fun. <laughs> and it really matters with the fans. So I think we try and... Because they want to know who's giving me... Is, I can't, do you, am I doing Why a good job? Why wrapping it up? Am I doing I'm a good being job? told. Don't, don't kill the messenger that. here. Am I doing a good job or wrapping up? You're doing a great job. Okay. We can understand it. If it, if it was, you're doing great. I can't hear you out there. What was, the sign? what was the sign that you gave him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, <laughs> we thought it was this one. I thought it was this one. It wasn't this. We're just, we're this just this getting guy. started, but okay, anyway. Yeah. I'll let you Sorry, man. No, it's cool. I thought it was traveling is what that was. Like. <laughs> and our last thing is our, is our fan question of the day for Tyler. Your favorite front man of all time. My favorite front man of all time? Wow. That's a tough one. Hey. What does um, he say? Well, Morrissey of the Smiths, I think, probably is. Michael Jackson? He's, he's not, front not man. a frontman. He's, front he's, he's a single good. man. I think Morrissey is off the top of my head. Ah. Okay. I'll treat you guys!